R E A R E A R E A R E A Audio R E A audio. R E A audio. R E A audio. Audio. R E A audio. 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 Deployments, absolutely. Right, have experienced a lot of things, um, and and it, it's it's funny because uh, I, I have three kids, and they're they're very spread out. Like I have a 19 year old son, a 16 year old daughter, and an eight year old daughter, yeah. so they're way spread out. But the the drama that I that thank goodness my daughter, uh, my oldest daughter, the 16 year old, kind of avoids. Right, yeah, so I'm yeah. very I feel very blessed because <laughs> I'm not a drama guy. Right, but uh, sometimes she comes home with some stuff, and 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 I go, you have no idea what people real issues that people That's right. deal with. That's right? right, and I I see that even sometimes here, and and. What's important to you is important to you. So I'm not saying that people's Absolutely. concerns are not important because it, it, personally to you, but people will come into my office with things and, and I'm like, I want to say, you know, right now there are people in Ukraine who, right. who have nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. I mean, that's a problem. Right. Right. The fact that your computer is glitching is is going to be OK. But to a 16 year old, the fact that her friend won't talk to her, that is a huge problem. It is. And it's actually more important to her in this moment than mm -hmm. anything dealing with something on the news. You're so nice. <laughs> I, I'm just like, are you kidding me? Just go away. But, but no, I, you're right. So that's how it is for employees, too. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, um, my goodness, week to week, we have employees who experience death in the family. Mm -hmm. We had a pet pass away last week for one of our employees. Those are real things and they really impact. There's a lot of weight on people's shoulders for how they, uh, they're they able to handle that and balance that with mm -hmm. what's expected of them in the workplace, yeah, right? Because you don't turn it off, right? You don't turn off that your aunt passed away. Mm -hmm. That's still there. So what do you do in the workplace? How do you how do you manage those expectations and manage performance at mm -hmm. the end of the day? Yeah, it's very hard. And yeah. I think that translates too, again, to the, the folks that are listening to this who might be in the risk management world and dealing with injured workers, right? Oh, exactly. We these get are the, real oh, issues they're handling. We get the questions all the time about like, so what happens if this happens? And what happens if that happens? And, and we always tell people that it's the communication. That's right. Did you talk to your injured worker? Did yeah. you know if you have a, a a client or if you have a we we resist using the word claimant because they're a human being on That's the right. other side of that phone, right? Did you communicate to them? Did you talk to them? And when you treat people like humans, it it makes things go a lot smoother. That's right. Right. So if you don't mind, talk a little bit about with all the burdens that people are feeling right now. Uh, you know, work. People have different, we talked a little bit about people being at home and being at the office and then people are sort of at the office and sort of at home and your colleague might be in the office and yeah. you're at home. So yeah. that's a big change. You got um, people worry about things that are happening on the news. We feel like COVID's going away and then we hear about this other thing I kind know. of trickling in and China's showing. So there's just so much and it's like one thing to another to another. That's right. And having the experience that you have with military families mm -hmm. and, and working through with them, what are some of the tools that people can use to help handle some of those burdens? So I think any time that we can, um, first of all, recognize that what people are experiencing is real. It's real to them, whatever it is. It could just be that they lost a file, they lost that paperwork, and it's the most critical thing they're dealing with, or it could be something that has nothing to do with the workplace mm -hmm. and is still impacting them. So recognizing that that is a very real thing. The second thing is to understand that we, <laughs> we, we believe in this idea of multitasking, but our brains weren't set up that way. So we are trying to focus on work and the kids and the neighbor and something that I have no influence over on the news. And we're trying to handle all those things. And what really happens is we are bogged down by something that we can't really control. So what do we do? We have to create 
pauses of time in our workday that we can kind of decompress. And it might literally be locking your computer and doing a stretch at your desk. It can be that simple. It could be uh, here at Reemployability, we do walks around the building. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple people that'll just grab one another and let's go on a quick walk, one or two walks around and get that. That's the fresh air, the mm -hmm. sunshine. And it also gets you to stop worrying about whatever might have been going on. But I think we have to just recognize that there are that there's a lot going on and we can't handle all of it. We can't solve all of it. We aren't expected to, but it is influencing sometimes the decision making. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of articles that I'm reading lately about this idea that the remote work and how it's really they're finding it's negative towards the work life balance instead of the opposite that we were expecting. We were expecting being able to be at home. You're able to empty the dishwasher. You're able to take care of some things during your quick break. What they're finding is that you're not really ever separating yourself from the workplace. You're mm -hmm. always at work. Then you don't have a peaceful place to go when work shuts off. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to find over the next couple months or years, some of this solid research done on how this, this uh, scenario yeah. is impacting us, whether it's hybrid, remote, um, way too many things that we're handling. But I think it's something that we've always dealt with. It's just as a, like we mentioned last week, employers recognizing that this is what's going on and paying attention to that and recognizing that we need some human connection in the workplace mm -hmm. because of all the things going on outside. I love my drive home from work. I, people think I'm crazy. It takes me about 30 minutes okay. and there's sometimes some crummy traffic on the way home, but, but that's my decompression time. That's you know, right. I can, I can transition. Of... Yeah. Listen to audiobooks. just, just kind of have my time there. So I, I, I get exactly what you're saying. Um, so we talked a little bit about the different generations and what they're expecting in the workplace now. And again, I think some of the things that they're expecting can also translate into adjusters that are talking to their uh, the injured workers that they're that they're working with on a daily basis in, in a way to kind of try to humanize that. Uh, you know, it, it, from what we read, the, uh, the baby boomer generation they want. Uh, money. Money is still what it is that Absolutely. they want. And, and stability. Job. Stability, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And and with uh, with the Gen Z, it's it's more diversity. They do. They value diversity. They want they want to work. They want to to be part of a group where not everybody looks the same and believes the same thing. They mm -hmm. really value being uh, belonging, but but having different flavors there. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. Now. Where problems come in is when somebody from one generation is communicating and working with somebody from another mm -hmm. generation. And it's very easy to, like my parents thought that the Gen Xers were a bunch of like, we're never going to be successful mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, my generation feels like the millennials are never going to be anything. Right. And my parents' generation thought that the, everybody was a hippie, right? That's right? So it's it's always been like that. But you know, what's crazy is that each generation created the next generation, right? right? Yeah. And I, I use this example, the we get for, for millennials who are we're told that millennials are like snowflakes. They're they're delicate and they want to be unique and individual and that everybody gets a trophy so their feelings aren't hurt. Mm -hmm. Well, guess who created that? The previous generation. Yeah, 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 <laughs> right? Those little kiddos didn't say, I want a trophy too. Yeah. It was really mom and dad that said, I didn't like the way I felt when I wasn't recognized for my efforts. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that I instill in my children the fact that their efforts are paying off, right? Right, right. Well, so then they get, everybody gets a participation trophy. There was a good reason for that, mm -hmm. but now it's become funny mm -hmm. and plenty of memes out there. Right. But the reality is that that's what uh, was created from somebody, the generation prior. Right. And we can come up with a thousand more examples oh, for every generation. Yeah. And it's fun. Um, that's right. And <laughs> the good fun. things and the bad things yeah. really uh, were instilled from, from the the wins and losses from the generation prior. So practically speaking, if I'm a Gen Xer and I'm a risk manager and I'm dealing with a bunch of millennials and and how do I better communicate? How I mean, I've always heard, you know, put yourself in their shoes, but that's it's kind hard. of hard to do sometimes. That's right. Are there any strategies that you can use to try to do that? I think understanding the differences. So you have to first understand. So putting yourself in somebody else's shoes only 
works if you really understand what is their scenario, what mm-hmm. is their situation. So a millennial values flexibility. They value um, autonomy, right? They value being able to dabble in things and be be part of teams. Well, if that's not something that you're familiar with, whatever generation you're in, doesn't matter, uh, then, then you might find it difficult to provide opportunities or to provide solutions to some situations that you're, you're trying to help solve mm-hmm. for that individual. But I also want to caution us from placing people in boxes and just right. saying that we are part of a generation or part of something. We really have to recognize that we are individuals, mm-hmm. right? And so it goes back to every, probably every conversation you and I have had, mm-hmm. talking, mm-hmm. communicate, Talk it out, uh, recognizing that this millennial and that millennial might have completely different wants and needs. And the only way you're going to find that out is by chatting and asking those questions. I love our book club that you've put together here. Um, We read The Energy Bus, which is awesome. Um, We're uh, almost done with Who Moved My Cheese, which is, I read that book like a hundred years ago and I've read it over and over and over. It's still applicable. Oh, it's it's amazing. And and I think the, the first step to being able to understand and communicate better is you gotta, in your own head, realize that you need to get better at it. That's right. Right. I, I had uh, my son played baseball for a number of years and he was never very aggressive at the plate. And we were, had a friend who was a professional tennis coach. And I, I went up to, I said, Craig, can you please help my son be more aggressive at the plate? And he said, he's not going to be unless he realizes he has to be. Uh, and until he yes. buys into that, you can talk to your blue in the face. Right. So uh, is that. Is there a way or are there strategies? I know there's never one magic way. How do you lead somebody in the direction of understanding that maybe there is a change that can be made that would help us all to get along better or do better at what you're doing? I think it's just creating opportunities. Mm -hmm. So a, a good slate where people can have honest conversations. I think it's when we're speaking the same language. You mentioned the book club. When Mm -hmm. we're speaking the same language from topics in a book and we're using literally the same phrases, the Mm -hmm. same ideas, it helps us to have a a level playing field and some of our values or beliefs that we're trying to to come up with. Mm -hmm. It also, I, I think it's just making sure that there's an environment of trust, right? I'm not going to disagree with you as my colleague or my boss if i feel that a disagreement will lead to my demise Mm -hmm. right yeah (laughs) so uh creating a a space where people can be honest and people can raise their hand and say i'm not sure i agree with this Mm -hmm. or uh you know i have a i have a different thought Mm -hmm. could i share it with you Mm -hmm. that's really important and it's great to be able to do it in an environment like this because social media has become more and more just like you put up an idea and they're like well you're just stupid that's right which is like a five-year-old right right. we've all i think we've degenerated to like like five-year-olds hold i'm gonna hold my breath until you take that post off yeah and think right now uh, everybody who's listening think about how many people you have in your life friends and family who have made the threat of i'm going to give up social media because of the very thing todd just mentioned Mm -hmm. uh it's real like there's we're kind of getting fed up with it Mm -hmm. so we want we want people to be authentic, but we want to be able to carry on a conversation that maybe both parties don't see it exactly the same and never will. And that's okay. Yeah. Crystal, what book are you reading like now or, or any suggestions on some, some good books that are, that are good reads to help along with some, what we're well, I'm going to, the sneak peek for our April book is the total money makeover by Dave Ramsey, just feeding into that wellness idea for our company. Mm-hmm. So this is going to hit the financial wellness component, mm-hmm. but I am not reading that one yet. Right. I am cheating. I'm going to the May book, which is the John Gordon book, um, The Sticks. I, what's the, oh goodness. The, I don't know that The one. bunch of sticks. It's a stick book. I do the know team, what you're talking. The team building. See? Uh, the so, stick book. The stick book. Look it up. The stick John book. Gordon. It's a stick one that's blue. It's got sticks on it. It looks fantastic. <laughs> a quick read. And I can't wait to roll that one out yeah. here in may that'll be good maybe the next time you have me on i'll remember the name of a book it's fine. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's all good. I was just, we were talking about asking questions and trying to get in touch with people. Um, the book of beautiful questions by Warren Berger. It's great. It's book. big. Um, but it, it was funny. My kids saw it on the bookshelf and they, and they're like, you're reading a book about questions. I'm yes. like, would you like to read the book about questions? Tell me why you feel <laughs> yes. that you think it's funny that I'm reading a book like this. You know, it's, it's great. If you can, um, I mean, that's, that's the number one thing about communicating is just trying to just be empathetic. Understand be empathetic. where somebody else is coming from. Yeah. The only way you can do that is if you create that environment where it's safe for them to share. And often you can create that by asking mm -hmm. those questions. Right? Yep. And even if you're not a business owner or a manager, no. you can do that in your role right now with all the people you work with and, yes. and be a champion of it. And people will appreciate you for it. And they'll feel... Uh, valued. Right. Yeah. Well, I value you coming on this podcast, Crystal. Excellent. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for listening this week to REA Audio. If you have any comments or suggestions for an upcoming episode, please let us know. You can email Todd at reemployability.com. Also, please follow REA Audio on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also check out more content at listen to rea.com. The book Crystal was trying to remember was Stick Together by John Gordon. Check it out. It's a good one. We'll talk to you next week. And until then, I invite you to give someone else's shoes a try. See how they feel. Thanks for listening.